If you've designed some ugly logos in the past, I don't want you to be too hard on yourself. It happens to the best of us. We've all cranked out a few uglies in our time. Live and learn, right? In this video, I wanna explain the seven biggest mistakes that designers make when creating a logo and how you can avoid forever falling into that same trap. So you're probably here because you're a designer and you create logos. And you, if you're like me, wanna create the best logo possible for your client or for maybe even your own business and brand. And so there are mistakes that I see all of the time online, Instagram, Facebook, and all over the place, even in person and print, that these are mistakes that I avoid at all costs. And I wanna teach these to you guys as well to help you avoid them and really elevate your logo design skills. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into those. Before we do that though, I would love to hear from you. What are some common mistakes that you see in logo designs that absolutely drive you crazy? Maybe it's fonts, maybe it's colors, whatever that is, drop a comment down below. I would love to get to know you. I wanna hear from you. And we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so the seven mistakes that I want you to avoid. Number one is no process. What do I mean by no process? Well, a lot of people just shoot from the hip, especially when you're a new designer, you don't actually have a process from discovery to research to sketching to mock-ups. All these different pieces of the logo design process are super important. If you just decide, I'm just gonna draw something random without actually getting to know the client, their business, their heart, their background, what they do, why they do it, and what they do better than everybody else, you're just creating something that looks cool. And just because it looks cool, it doesn't mean that it functions. So you need to do more than just make something look nice. You need to develop a process, and this is important. I'll probably make a whole video. In fact, I think I have a video on the logo design process. So if you're not familiar with this, this is something that I want you to do right away. The second mistake that I see in logo design is coloring and stylizing the logo and sending that to the client the first time. Every single logo design that you create, I'm gonna say this one more time, every single logo design that you create should always go to the client first in black and white. And you need to give them those expectations. You need to tell them that you're going to send it to them in black and white. Why? Well, it's important. If you send a logo that looks beautiful in black and white and the client loves it in black and white, then when you add the colors and all those fancy effects and the mock-up on the wall with the reflection that you see and all these people doing, a lot of logos are getting sent over like that with all this style and all this color and all these drop shadows and bevels and glares. That stuff is a distraction from the core concept of the logo. If you're going to create a great logo, it needs to look amazing in black and white and get a wow. I think Milton Glaser says it says, wow, no, or something like that. So it's really important that you focus on making a logo that looks beautiful in black and white. That's the second mistake that I see all the time. The third mistake, this is a big one, this is a super common one, is using the same typography, the same font that you're using in your logo mark, so like the word target, right? Using that in all of the rest of your branding. You need to have multiple fonts, not too many. Two to three fonts is totally fine, it's totally acceptable, but there's a lot of people that will take, let's just say Bleeding Cowboy, oh my gosh, like one of my least favorite fonts. They'll take Bleeding Cowboy and then they'll make all the rest of their branding and all the rest of their type Bleeding Cowboy or they'll use Trajan, or they'll use Montserrat, and all the rest of their fonts are Montserrat across the whole page. This is a big no-no when it comes to branding. It's a big no-go in logo design. I want you to focus on making the logo font its own unique font, aside from the rest of the brand, so that it stands out and it's different from everything else. Logo design mistake number four. This is a big one. I've seen this happen many, many times. Don't use clip art. Do not put images or photos inside of your logo. It is absolutely pointless. Logos are not designed to have clip art or images inside them. If you do have an image, it needs to be like an artistic piece. You see fruit companies, like fruit growing companies, they have like pictures of landscapes in the background or mountain ranges. Those are hand drawn. It's okay to do a hand drawn simple art piece like a like for the specific brands, but the general rule is to not put photos. You do not put a photo in your logo. I don't wanna see a colored image in your logo. Stay away from that stuff. Keep the logo simple, and we're gonna jump on that here in just a minute, but the simplicity is a very important piece of your logo design, so that's one of the big mistakes that I see, is to see people putting clip art and photos and these really complicated graphics inside of their logo designs, and that's just a big no-no. Logo design mistake number five, and this one is hilarious, we're gonna put some examples up while I'm talking, is inappropriate imagery. 
There's one they got posted in our Instagraphics Pro group that was absolutely ridiculous. They had like a big D and it was supposed to like be for all the letters, but it actually doesn't make sense. I've seen some that are like really inappropriate. It looks like a butt cheek with something going up in between it. Just a lot of inappropriate things. Look for negative space in your logos. Make sure that it's not showing anything like cleavage or feminine or male parts or anything like that. Like you wanna make sure that these logos are appropriate and they actually work. When you do these big letters and then like a bunch of little letters after it, like you don't want your logo to be taken the wrong way and communicate the wrong message. A logo design is your first impression. It's a very important impression. You only get one chance to make a first impression, right? So it's really important that you get the logo right and you don't try to go outside of the box too much. I want you to be creative and I want you to think outside the box, but if you go way off in left field and people don't understand what the brand or the logo is or what it says, you got a big problem. So this is a big one that I wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of as well. Logo design mistake number six is following the popular hot trends in designs. There's a lot of crazy designs and concepts and trends that are out there, the paper design and material design and all these different things. But one of the worst ones is like the most popular font. So like using papyrus or bleeding cowboy. When the bleeding cowboy font came out, I think every tattoo shop in America changed their logo to this font and it's one of the worst fonts you could possibly use for a logo design. I'm, I stand against it. And if you hate Bleeding Cowboy as well, give me an amen down in the comments because Bleeding Cowboy is terrible. Don't just follow the trends because everybody else is doing it. Be original, be authentic, be different. Following the trends isn't gonna set, set you apart. It's gonna make you blend in with the crowd. And that is the exact opposite impression that I want you to have in your business. And I want you to give to your clients. And that's what I'm all about is helping you stand out. So that's logo design mistake number six. Do not just follow the popular trends. If there's something cool that you like personally and you wanna wrap a concept into your design, then you can do that, but stay away from the fads and from the trends. Logo design mistake number seven, and this is the last one, and this is probably one of the most important ones. This is a very subtle thing that I see people do, but it's very, very common, and it's overcomplicated logos. I understand the creative brain. We get all these ideas and we want to put Easter eggs in there like Disney does. We want to come up with these creative concepts. But one of the worst things you can do is put five, three, even four, or sometimes even two concepts, two ideas into a logo design. Focus on one core concept for the logo. Sometimes it's okay to do two. Like I have this little hidden symbol in there. Like if you look at the FedEx logo, right? It's got the little arrow in it. That's one concept. You got the Amazon smile. They have a little smile and all that. They have some hidden gems inside of some of the best logos in the world. But there are people that do special colors and they change one letter in the font and then they make one lettering bigger and they try to do like five or six concepts within one logo design, one word mark or logo mark or both of them. And they try to do four or five concepts to make it so unique that it just makes it busy and it doesn't make it memorable. And so this is the next part that we're gonna get into is how do you know what is a good logo? And I wanna talk about that here in just a minute. But first, I have a quick favor to ask. If you're finding this content helpful, if you're resonating with this content, please hit that like button, the subscribe button, it helps me out a lot. It tells YouTube that this content is good, that it's helping you, and it's gonna recommend it to more people like you, which is really, really important to me. So if you could do that for me, I'd greatly appreciate it. Now, the time you've been waiting for these are three things that I want to give you that are going to help you really level up your logo design. The best logo designers in the world share these things. Paul Asher, Sagi Haviv, Milton Glazer, um, what's the guy that did the, the logo? Rob Janoff that did the Apple logo. All these people follow these guidelines, follow these rules, these three simple rules. And if you follow these, it will help you with your logo design career significantly and your overall graphic design career significantly. And those three things are keep your logos simple, keep them applicable, and keep them memorable. I'm gonna say that again. Simple, applicable, and memorable. And I wanna break that down just a little bit. Simple, like I said, the seventh mistake is overcomplicating things. Do not overcomplicate a logo. You wanna keep it simple. And what I mean by simple is one core idea and concept behind the logo design that makes it unique. Not two, three, four, five, or 10. You wanna make it simple. Applicable means if you have a roofing company, a lot of people do the typical, let me just put a roof in my logo. I understand that. But try to do something that is roofing related, but is a little bit outside the box. Something that's unique that isn't just a roof. Do something like, a tile of a roof, or if you're doing 
wood roofing versus comp roofing versus shingle, like find something unique about a roof. Maybe it's the, the edge of the roof. Find something that applies to the roofing industry. Maybe it's a hammer, maybe, I don't know what it is. I'm just using that as an example, but it needs to be applicable to the industry. So like my brand Lead Butler, I have a little Lead Butler character. I use that for a specific reason. It's a little character. That's the symbol, the logo mark for that company is the Lead Butler character. You wanna make sure that it's also memorable. This is a really important one. If people can't remember your logo, your logo or your client's logo, and it just gets forgotten about, that's a problem. You look at the Amazon logo, there's no other logo on the planet that looks like that. It's very, very unique. It has a little smile. It's got the little smirk. It pushes up the letter. It's got one core concept in there that all flows very well and blends together. And the, one of the reasons why I don't want you to overcomplicate it and put multiple ideas is the logos start to look like you just copied and pasted and put a bunch of stuff on a, on a canvas and they don't blend very well. So it's really important. And I, a good example of that is if you go and Google the word roof doctors, which is a client of ours, and you see their original logo, they had the little cross, and then they had inside where the T was supposed to be, which made it look like dock oars. They had a little you know, stenograph thing that goes up and down the lines for the heart, and then they had the house, and they had like four or five concepts, and it looked like there was just a bunch of stuff. It had an RX symbol in the house, and I'm like, what is, what is all this? So I simplified that logo down to the house blending in with the word roof doctors. We put the T back in, got rid of the cross. I put the cross in the house and I blended everything really well together. You can see the real world example and maybe our video guy here can add that in there to show you just a side by side comparison. But you wanna simplify and make your logo memorable. There's no other logo for roof doctors that looks like that. And in fact, there are some people that are actually imitating that logo that we redesigned now. So simple, applicable and memorable. Those are the three big things. I wanted to close this video out now that I've shared all that with you with a quote by a legend in the design industry, specifically in the logo design industry, and I'll read you her quote. It's by Paula Scher. If you don't know her, you should definitely look her up. She's one of the partners at a company called Pentagram, but it's, it's through mistakes that you can actually grow. She says, it's through mistakes you can actually grow. You have to get bad in order to get good. It's through mistakes that you can actually grow and you have to get bad before you get good. This is a powerful quote. I did a lot of bad logo designs in my past, even probably fairly recently. I don't always hit the nail on the head. I don't always hit a bullseye, but most of the time I do. And by applying these principles that I've shared with you in this video, you're going to eliminate that as much as possible. And that's my goal for you is to help you level up your life, level up your career and your business. So I wanna remind you that this is a personal invitation from me right now to join our community. I'm building an amazing community. We were already doing events. It's called the Instagraphics Pro Network and we have a growing community of almost 400 people in there now. And I would love to personally invite you and have you in this community with us where we're sharing content, we're doing events, some trainings, we're sharing our work, we're giving each other feedback. It's an amazing, amazing group unlike any other group out there for a number of reasons, but I can't, I don't have time to share that in this video, but I want to invite you. All you got to do is go down to the description of this video, click the link below, and make sure you fill out all of the questions or I won't let you in. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. So I'd love to have you there. I hope to see you there. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. I'm Adrian Boysell, and as always, keep looking up.